Detective Recap here. Today, I'm going to explain a comedy drama film called, Risky Business. As one of the most iconic teen flicks of its time, the movie is a love letter to the new age. It's decked out in excess, fresh-faced depravity, and a heaping spoonful of bad decisions and poor judgment, courtesy of its naive protagonist who's played by Tom Cruise in his briefs. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. Centered around the life of a wealthy teenage boy, this movie explores the true meaning of freedom, innocence, and materialism. As the main character transitions to adulthood, he'll soon learn that there's more to life than studying and having fun. Joel Goodson is a rich teenager who lives with his parents in the suburbs of Chicago. One day, Joel is playing poker with his friends when he shares a dream he had where he failed his college exams. Then, he starts talking about his neighbor, Kessler, and says that something almost happened to them. In response, his friends only laugh and make fun of him. As the boys leave Joel's house, his friend, Miles, advises him to loosen up a bit. However, Joel thinks that loosening up could jeopardize his future, and he doesn't want to make a mistake. A bit disappointed, Miles encourages Joel to live a little and to have fun once his parents are out of town. Although Joel already has everything he could ask for, he still takes his education seriously. He's so hung up on it that he even dreams about never going to college. Though it's admirable that he's averse to failure in disappointing his parents, his friends clearly have somewhat of a dim view of his too serious lifestyle. On the day of Joel's parents' departure, Mrs. Goodson asks his son how he did in his SATs. When Joel tells his mom his scores, she asks him if he could retake the tests, and Joel says he could. Before they leave, Mr. Goodson reminds Joel of everything he should and shouldn't do in the house while they're gone, stressing that he needs to follow all the rules. On their way to the airport, Joel's dad informs him that he's arranged an interview for him for his application to Princeton. Joel's mom then advises that during his interview, he should mention his involvement with future enterprisers since they're looking for that kind of thing. Before Joel's parents board their plane, Mrs. Goodson says she's left emergency money for him, while Mr. Goodson warns his son not to use his car. It's a bit sad that Joel's mother still isn't satisfied with his SATs, to the point that she wants him to retake them if possible. Joel must have done his best, but sometimes, a simple thing like this pushes a kid to his limit and it doesn't always yield good results. While some kids might feel motivated, others might feel pressured and depressed. As soon as his parents are gone, Joel drinks alcohol and plays loud music in the house using his father's equalizer. The next day, Joel learns that Miles got into Harvard. The teenagers talk about how much a Harvard graduate makes, and it disappoints Joel that his friends are only interested in making money and not in accomplishing anything. When asked what he wants to do, Joel teasingly says he wants to serve mankind, and his friends just mock him. During their future enterprisers meeting, Joel argues with Barry about their production. Another proof that he isn't just another spoiled rich kid, Joel actually thinks about what he wants to achieve in life. Unlike his friends, Joel wants to be known for something significant and not just for the amount of money he earns. However, despite his dedication to staying focused on his studies and doing something important, it is clear that his friends are affecting the way he thinks. Later that evening, Joel's friend, Glenn, and his girlfriend show up at Joel's house, asking for a room. Being a good friend, Joel hesitantly offers them his room before he continues working on their product with Barry. However, the two of them can't concentrate due to Glenn and his girlfriend's noises, so Joel reminds Glenn to lock his house once they leave. He then takes his dad's Porsche and drives around town with Barry. While on the road, Joel and Barry encounter a group of teenagers in another car who challenges them to a race. Joel and Barry easily beat them, and the two have more fun during the night. The next day, Joel tells Miles about his trip with Barry in his dad's car. Miles gets impressed, so he asks Joel to phone a call girl he's found in the newspaper. When Joel refuses, Miles calls the number and poses as Joel, asking for a service later in the day. After doing some household chores and homework, Joel opens the door to the call girl that Miles has contacted. It turns out, the call girl is actually a trans woman named Jackie. Enraged, Joel calls Miles and demands he come over to his house, but his friend refuses, saying he's playing cards. Annoyed, Jackie asks Joel to pay her for wasting her time, and Joel agrees. Before she leaves, Jackie leaves Joel the number of another call girl, Lana, and tells him to contact her. As much as he wants to enjoy his newly found freedom, Joel still has lots of inhibitions. The fun he's having is tame, and even though there's no shame in living a more modest and subdued life, his friends seem to think otherwise. Joel's perfect little life is about to get messy because of his friends, and it looks like he won't be able to do anything about it. As he is about to sleep, Joel imagines himself making out with Kessler. The fantasy is ruined, however, when the cops show up and surround the house, along with his parents and Kessler's father. Frustrated, Joel calls Lana and asks her to meet him. Joel says his name is Ralph, and after giving the girl his address, Joel prepares for his guest. When Lana finally arrives, Joel is stunned by how beautiful she is. Still thinking that Joel's name is Ralph, Lana makes love to him the whole night. In the end, Joel's frustrations and curiosity have won out. It's clear that he wants to sleep with his neighbor, but Joel doesn't want to risk anything. While sleeping with a stranger is a bold thing for a straight-edged teenager to do, it's at least something that's not going to get traced back to him. Or so he might believe. The next day, Joel tells Lana his real name, but the girl isn't interested and just asks for $300 for her service. Without enough money, Joel asks Lana to wait for him in the house while he goes to the bank to get some cash. 
After getting the money, Joel returns home and finds that Lara has taken his mother's expensive crystal egg. Worried, Joel asks Miles to help him retrieve it, and the boys go to a hotel which, according to Jackie, Lana frequents. When Lana shows up with a client, Joel suddenly gets nervous and decides not to talk to her even though she's already seen them. Miles is disappointed that they went all the way to the hotel for nothing, but just as they're about to get in the car, Lana shows up to talk to Joel. Inside the vehicle, Lana asks Joel for a lift, but Joel refuses unless she gives him back the egg. However, Joel is forced to drive away when Lana's manager, Guido, shows up with a gun and demands Lana to get out of the car. Clearly, Lana is associated with some bad people. Not only did Joel made the mistake of sleeping with her, but he also put his and Miles' life at risk. Now, it's only a matter of time before one of them gets hurt. When Lana realizes they're being chased by Guido, Joel speeds up, thinking he can escape from the man. Joel drives through the streets and narrow alleys until they get home, proud that he's managed to lose Guido. The next day, Mrs. Goodson calls his son to tell him their flight information. While talking to his mom, Joel pretends like everything is fine at home all while Lana serves him breakfast. After talking to his mom, Joel asks Lana about Guido, and she informs him that she's already quit working with him. Lana is irritated that Guido thinks he owns her, but the problem is she owes him money for her hospital bills. After learning that Lana's condition isn't that serious, Joel thanks her for breakfast before politely asking her to leave. He tells her he needs to go to school, but Lana remains seated and smokes, disappointed that Joel won't let her stay. Miles and Glenn then arrive to pick up Joel, but Joel tells them to go without him since Lana won't leave. He then goes back inside and tells Lana he just wants his mom's egg back, but Lana says she needs more time to get her stuff back, including the egg. Defeated, Joel lets Lana stay in his house but warns her not to steal anything. To say that Lana is insensitive is an understatement. After stealing from Joel, Lana still expects him to do her kindness by giving her a place to stay. Still, despite his high SAT score and expensive schooling, Joel still doesn't have the discernment to realize that letting Lana, the woman who just stole his mother's egg, stay in his house is a recipe for disaster. While Joel is in school, Lana goes through his house and even uses his dad's Porsche to go to the train station. When he gets home, Joel gets confused after seeing Miles in the driveway. He then learns that Glenn has gone inside to meet Lana, and when he comes out, Joel asks him if he's done anything with the girl. Glenn leaves with Miles after assuring Joel he didn't sleep with Lana. As Joel is about to go inside the house, he learns that Lana has invited her friend, Vicky. Angry, Joel orders the girls to leave, and luckily, they do as they're told. However, just a few moments later, Joel hears someone arguing outside. When he realizes that Guido is harassing Lana and Vicky, he gets out of the house to see how he can help them. The girls immediately run back inside, and as Guido tries to enter his house, Joel asks him to go away. Guido gets mad when the girls refuse to come with him, but Lana tells his manager they no longer work for him, adding that they've decided to work for Joel instead. Instead of making another scene, Guido calmly talks to Joel, warning him to return the girls to him. If it isn't clear yet, Lana is pure trouble, and she keeps doing as she pleases knowing full well that Joel can't do anything about it. There's a world far larger than Joel's ever known, and Lana embodies everything about it. She's unpredictable, and she comes with all sorts of questionable people, while Joel remains helpless against her. She may not say it, but Lana is enjoying all the things she's getting from Joel for free. Joel lets the girls stay for one more night on the condition that they'll quickly look for another place to stay, and the girls agree. Lana even says she'll return the egg as soon as she gets her stuff back, making Joel feel a bit at ease. After dinner, Lana goes to Joel's room as he works on his product for future enterprisers. Joel explains that they have to make a product which they'll also have to market. In turn, Lana asks if he makes a lot of money, and Joel says he doesn't. Ignoring everything Joel has told her, Lana invites him to join them in getting high. After getting wasted with the girls and Barry, Joel decides to go for a walk with Lana. The girl then suggests they get all their friends together to make some money, but Joel doesn't like the idea and refuses. To convince Joel, Lana offers to be his girlfriend for the next couple of days, free of charge. Before Joel can answer, Lana retrieves her purse from the car and accidentally shifts gear. When she returns to talk to Joel, Lana reveals that she's left home because her stepfather kept coming on to her. As they talk about her life, Lana gets upset and tells Joel to stop judging her before leaving. When Joel gets up, too, the car suddenly starts moving down the hill. With the keys inside and the door locked, Joel desperately tries to stop his dad's Porsche from rolling into the lake but fails. Lana is like a disaster magnet. All it takes is for her to bat an eyelash for Joel to encounter a series of misfortunes. Joel may be a smart boy, but he clearly knows nothing when it comes to judging a person's character. He hardly knows anything about the world outside of his schooling and business. What Joel needs to understand is that there's a fine line between being kind and stupid. As if wrecking his dad's car isn't enough, Joel gets a five-day suspension after threatening a nurse, who refuses to give him an excuse note for his class. He's also kicked out of the future enterprisers, which will surely ruin his record. With no other options, Joel goes to Lana's apartment and breaks down. To pay for the Porsche, Joel agrees to Lana's plan of turning his house into a brothel for one night. Joel and Lana introduce their friends to each other, and together, they successfully run the business. As more clients arrive at Joel's house, the interviewer from Princeton, Bill Rutherford, shows up, too. Joel isn't expecting Rutherford that night, but he tries his best to accommodate the man and ace his interview. However, with all the racket in the house, 
Joel and Rutherford can't concentrate on their meeting. Once the interview is over, Rutherford sadly tells Joel his record is not Ivy League material, but Joel doesn't care. The interviewer is surprised by Joel's reaction, and Joel tells Lana it looks like he's going to the University of Illinois. As the night deepens, Rutherford decides to stay and mingle with the girls, while Joel expresses his regret to Lana about their risky business. Lana then tells him that he's at least making a lot of money and providing his friends good service, and Joel agrees with her. When Joel's parents call, he assures them that everything's fine at home. Even though Joel's worked hard all his life to make sure that he'll get in an Ivy League, it all comes crashing down in a blink of an eye. Anyone can date Joel's slip-ups to when he met Lana, yet he still keeps running to her for help, even after all the trouble she's caused him. Then again, all of this is new territory for Joel, and foreign times call for foreign solutions. Rutherford leaves satisfied, and Joel happily counts the money they've earned. With the girls paid, everyone goes home, leaving Joel and Lana alone. The two make love inside the Metropolitan Transit once it's empty. When Joel returns home the next day, he realizes that their house has been ransacked. He immediately calls Lana to inform her of what happened, but Lana can't be reached. As Joel leaves his phone number to Lana, Guido answers her phone and taunts Joel about losing their furniture. Guido demands Joel buy all of their belongings back, including the egg, and once their transaction is done, Joel and his friends hurriedly put all the furniture back in place. Meanwhile, Joel's parents get tired of waiting for him at the airport and decide to take a cab home. Luckily, the boys manage to fix and clean the house just in time before Joel's parents arrive. However, Joel's mom notices a small crack in her egg and expresses how deeply disappointed she is with her son. As Joel cleans outside, Mr. Goodson tells him that Rutherford said that Princeton could use a guy like Joel. Later on, Joel goes on a date with Lana and they talk about their future together. By the end of the film, Joel has clearly changed into a new person. It's hard to say whether he's changed for the better or worse, but he's definitely become wiser. A little more street smart, too, and God knows the boy needs that. With how much Joel valued his mother's egg, to the point that he let it be the driving force of many of his interactions with Lana, the egg may be a stand-in for his innocence. After all, it's his innocence that led him to meet Lana in the first place, and it's what kept him putty in Lana's hands. And just like the egg, Joel's innocence already has a crack in it by the end of the film. Hilariously, Joel didn't just get into Princeton because of his own merits. The bang in time that Rutherford had with the girls clearly played a role in it. Joel's tale is a nice reminder that rigidity won't always get you to where you want to be. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.